The Big Bang is a scientific theory about how the universe started and then how the stars and galaxies were formed that we see today. The Big Bang theory states that the universe began from a very very small body which was extremely hot and dense. There was no distinction between anything like a star or atoms, any form or structure. This state was called a singularity. As all the mass of universe was concentrated or you can say that was present in one small body so we can say that the weight of the small body was equal to infinity. Its volume was also considered to be almost equal to infinity. After millions of years an explosion occurred into that small body which was responsible for the formation of our universe. Big Bang theory is also called expanding universe hypothesis. When it comes to the formation of our solar system, the most widely accepted view is known as the nebular hypothesis. According to this theory, the sun and all the planets of our solar system begin as a nebula. Nebula is a giant cloud of gas and dust. Nebula is such a region in space which has a high density as compared to its surroundings. Then about 4.57 billion years ago, something happened that caused the cloud to collapse. This could have been the result of a passing star or shock waves from a supernova. But the end result was a gravitational collapse at the center of the cloud. Now if you say, what is gravitational collapse? It is the contraction of an astronomical object due, the, due to the influence of its own gravity, which tends to draw matter inward toward the center of gravity. As the denser regions pulled in more and more matter, they also developed angular momentum. Very slowly, collection of hydrogen and helium increased in the center of the nebula. Gravity played its role in this process. The potential energy of the particles, dust and gases was converted into kinetic energy and heat. All this happened in millions of years. When mass at the center of the nebula increased, and it started contracting, the angular momentum also increased. You must be aware of from physics of FSE that smaller body greater the speed. Now a centrifugal force come into play. This centrifugal force is responsible that objects and gases of different densities rotate in different orbits. Most of the material ended up in a ball at the center while the rest of the matter flattened out into a disk that circled around it. While the ball at the center formed the sun, the rest of the material would form into planets. Because metallic elements only comprised a very small fraction of the solar nebula, the terrestrial planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars could not grow very large. In contrast, the giant planets including Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune formed beyond the point between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter where material is cool enough for volatile icy compounds to remain solid. The ice that formed these planets was more plentiful than the metals and silicates that formed the terrestrial inner planets which allowed them to grow massive enough to capture large atmospheres of hydrogen and helium. Within 50 million years, the pressure and density of hydrogen in the center of the protostar became great enough for it to begin thermonuclear fusion. The temperature, reaction rate, pressure and density increased until hydrostatic equilibrium was achieved. At this point, the Sun became a main sequence star. Solar wind from the Sun created the heliosphere and swept away the remaining gas and dust from the protoplanetary disk into interstellar space, ending the planetary formation process. And hence, our modern current solar system came into being. Gravity causes every object to pull every other object towards it. There is gravity everywhere. 
it gives shape to the orbits of the planet the solar system and even to the galaxies gravity from the sun reaches throughout the solar system and beyond and keeps the planet in their orbits gravity from earth keeps the moon and human made satellites in orbit too but the gravity decreases with distance so it is possible to be far away from a planet or star and feel lesser gravity when mass at the center of the nebula gradually increased and the nebula started contracting an angular momentum increased and a centrifugal force came into play this centrifugal force is responsible that objects and gases of different densities rotate in different uh, orbits and it is responsible that lower density elements like hydrogen and helium go inwards and heavier elements go outwards no they are not same as i have already discussed in the start of this video inner or central region of solar system is sun the sun lies at the heart of the solar system where it is the largest object it holds 99.8% of the solar system's mass earth has a highest density of any planet in our solar system at 5.5 g per cm3 whereas mean density of sun is 1410 kg per m3 or 0.255 times the mean density of earth which means that sun has the highest density Accretion is the gradual increase in size by the build up of matter due to gravity. As objects in space get larger, their gravity increases, causing more objects to collide and stick to them, continuing the process. <laughs>